Welcome to the White House. Thanks for being here. I have no announcements to make at the top, so I'll go to Darlene. Thank you. Um, on gay marriage, can you tell us at this point whether the President has been brought up today and on the arguments today over the Supreme Court? As you know, the uh, uh, senior advisor, Valerie Jarrett, was there, White House counsel, uh, Kathy Rumler, as well as an associate counsel, Kathleen Hartnett, were uh, in attendance. Uh, the, uh, the President has been uh, updated on the uh, arguments, uh, but beyond that, I don't have uh, anything for you. Has he signed the ECR? He has not, but will, uh, I'm sure, in due time. And then a quick question about Afghanistan. The meeting that Secretary of State Kerry had with um, Karzai, where Karzai sort of explained that his uh, comment that the U.S. was conspiring with the Taliban was misinterpreted by the media. Is the White House satisfied with President Karzai's explanation about what he had to say? Well, look, we have a very important relationship with President Karzai. Most importantly, we have a very important relationship with the Af Afghan people, the Afghanistan government. As you know, on Sunday, Secretary Kerry and uh, Pakistani Chief of Army Staff General Kayani had dinner, uh, and they discussed a range of bilateral security issues, including combating terrorism, reconciliation process in Afghanistan, and regional security. Then, of course, as you know, Secretary Kerry was in Kabul yesterday to reaffirm the U.S. commitment to our strategic partnership with Afghanistan, and he met with President Karzai and other Afghan officials, as well as with civil society groups, uh, to discuss how we can continue to work together to sustain the progress we've made and to advance our shared goal of a stable, sovereign Afghanistan that is no longer a launching pad for Al Qaeda and other transnational uh, terrorists. Uh, we have, as you know, the the, the transfer uh, uh, of uh, responsibility for the facility at Bagram has taken place. Uh, and we are continuing to work with our Afghan uh, counterparts uh, as we move forward with the President's uh, policies on, on these issues. Yes? North Korea has uh, renewed some of its threats against the United States. Does this raise heightened concerns, or is this just the usual rhetoric? Well, Mark, as you know, <clears throat> North Korea's bellicose rhetoric and the threats uh, that they engage in follow a pattern designed to raise tensions and intimidate others. And as we say consistently, the DPRK will achieve nothing by these threats or provocations, uh, which will only further isolate North Korea and undermine international efforts to ensure peace and stability in Northeast Asia. We continue to urge the North Korean leadership to heed President Obama's call to choose the path of peace and to come into compliance with its international obligations. Uh, you know, this is uh, something that we work on consistently with our international partners. The United Nations Security Council recently took action unanimously uh, in, a, in response to uh, North Korean actions that were not in keeping with their international obligations and imposed further sanctions as part of that process. Um, so we do look at this as part of a pattern, and we respond in the way that we always have. And uh, let me just go back to, to Darlene's question. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's early days yet on the, on the Prop 8 case, but um, some of the Justice Kennedy's comments raised concerns that the court might not want to uh, fully engage on this topic. Would this be a missed opportunity to settle an issue that's of great importance to the country? Well, I'm not going to eva evaluate the arguments uh, today, uh, and I, uh, as everyone, I think, will wait uh, for whatever decisions the Supreme Court makes in uh, the case they heard today and the case they'll, he they'll hear tomorrow. Uh, I would wait. I, I think we've seen recent in recent history, you know, th there's ample reason to be cautious about predicting outcomes in Supreme Court cases based on uh, any particular piece of the puzzle, in this case, oral arguments. So uh, I'll heed my own caution and not, and not engage in that. I just want to detail. Um, you said that the budget submission would come the week of April 8th. Mm -hmm. Have you narrowed it down to a specific day that week yet? Between Monday and Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good to see you. How do you go to immigration for a moment? Mm -hmm. This morning, uh, Janet Napolitano said. And by between, I mean could include Monday or Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Inclusive. No. Inclusive of. Uh, Secretary Napolitano said today that triggers are not necessary before comprehensive uh, immigration reform. So what does the White House do to convince those on the other side 
since there are no reliable metrics about border security, what will you do to, to convince them that the border is secure enough for immigration and a path to citizenship to begin? Well, I would, I think the question is excellent, and I would note that uh, what Secretary Napolitano has said, Napolitano has said is that uh, the Department of Homeland Security measures progress using a number of metrics to make sure we are putting our resources where they will have the most impact. And I, I think that while, uh, you know, there are different ways to look at this issue. The fact is, uh, by a host of measures, and uh, the, there has been great improvement in our border security. Certainly the facts are there when it comes to the resources that have been applied to border security, the doubling of border security agents. Uh, as well as the other metrics that you will, you will often hear Secretary Napolitano or others discuss. So, you know, we look at a variety of measures, and, and, and I think you can look at what this President has committed to and the record on border security since he came into office uh, to evaluate his assertion that border security is a vital element of comprehensive immigration reform. That has been his position, and it continues to be. And I would note, and this is something that has been acknowledged by important members of the Senate, Republican members, uh, the progress that has been made on this very important issue, border security. Much of, you know, the last time comprehensive immigration reform was essentially abandoned, well, uh, some of the issues, you know, one of the, the principal reason for that was because of concerns about border security. And many of the metrics that were position, you know, put forward then have been met. The goals and the targets that uh, were said to, you know, have to be achieved before we could move forward have been met. So. Uh, but this is an ongoing issue. This is an ongoing concern, and it's an ongoing project of this administration, and it will certainly be an important part of immigration reform. Do you, does the White House oppose commissions or certain triggers uh, before a path to citizenship can begin? What we have said, and I'll say today, is that we are not going to judge uh, the bill before it's been written. And we are working with uh, the senators who are in the Gang of Eight uh, as they make progress, and they've made considerable progress, and that is worth noting. Uh, Senator Schumer just the other day talked about uh, where they uh, are in that process and the progress that they've been making, and we were heartened by that. Uh, but as the President said yesterday, this is, you know, we have to keep pushing. We have to make sure that we follow through on this progress and that that progress leads to uh, a bill that has bipartisan support and it can be signed by this President. And we're not there yet. Progress is being made. It's being made in the Senate, which is where the President hoped it would be made. Uh, and we are uh, very much monitoring that process and engaging in that process. Uh, but it's not done yet. And I don't want to prejudge a bill that hasn't been written. But if I could just press you on that, mm -hmm. it does appear as though that Secretary Napolitano did today prejudge. She said that the triggers are not necessary. Does the White House agree with that assessment? I think what she was saying, and the assessment we do agree with, is that there are a variety of metrics by which you can measure, and we do measure, progress on border security. And these are metrics that uh, others use to measure border security, including Democrats and Republicans in the Senate and uh, beyond the Senate, beyond the Congress. So, you know, we're working with Congress on this, with the Senate on this. Progress has been made. Border security is one of the key principles that the President has put forward that uh, has to be part of comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, he has demonstrated his seriousness on this issue, uh, and as has Secretary Napolitano. Uh, but it is, a, is something that we're, you know, it's not a done project. We have to continue working on it. Jay, yes. Thanks, Jay. Um, Senators Paul, Cruz, and Lee say that they plan to filibuster a procedural vote to begin considering gun control legislation. Is the President aware of this, and what is his reaction? I haven't discussed that with him. I, I did see him earlier today, but I haven't, I didn't hear that uh, issue raised. I would simply say that it, you know, filibusters of efforts to move forward with, you know, with, with common sense measures to redu reduce gun violence would be unfortunate. Uh, you know, we have worked with Congress uh, with the Senate to try to advance the elements of the President's uh, plan uh, that require le legislative action. And these, again, are common sense measures. 
closing gun show loopholes, uh, that's an idea that has something like 90 percent support in the United States. By some polls, has a majority of support among gun owners in America, support among Republicans and independents and Democrats. We ought to be able to do this. But it's hard, and we're continuing to work with Congress to, to get it done. Uh, and as you know, a, a number of pieces of this have been voted out of committee. That is important progress. Uh, Senator Reid has vowed that action will be taken on uh, these elements, and that is important progress. Uh, we hope that that takes place. I mean, you know, a vote ought to be held on all these elements. That was what the President made clear when he announced his plan. It is what the American people deserve. Uh, it is what the victims of gun violence deserve. Do you think I mean, I don't think you, to tell the families of those who have lost their children to gun violence that bills like this might be filibustered. I don't think that would be welcome news. Do you think you would be able to overcome that 60-vote threshold? Oh, yeah, I, I don't have uh, uh, you know, prognostications to make about these measures. What I can tell you is that they have broad support. Elements of them have overwhelming support. And they ought to be voted on, and uh, the President uh, backs every element of them. Also, um, does the President think the assault weapons ban has any chance of passing as an amendment? The President supports strongly the renewal of the assault weapons ban. He has since he was a senator. Uh, it is a part of the comprehensive package of proposals that he put forward. Uh, and he certainly hopes that the Senate will pass it. What type of pressure is he willing to exert? You know, the President has been engaging with lawmakers uh, of both parties on these issues. When he has been having conversations with Democrats and Republicans, much of the attention has focused on uh, fiscal and budget issues uh, in the reporting, and, and much of the conversation has been uh, devoted to those topics. But they have also included conversations about uh, comprehensive immigration reform and moving forward on uh, gun violence measures. Uh, so he and that, that will continue, as will our staff uh, interaction with Congress on these issues. And the president, you'll continue to hear the president uh, in public discuss the need to move forward on these important measures. Will he really twist arms, though, particularly with members of his own party? I think he he has, and will continue to make clear that uh, this is a measure that he believes ought to pass. Uh, that it's a common sense measure that uh, would not and this is true of everything that's part of his plan, would not take a single firearm away from a law-abiding American citizen that respects entirely uh, the Second Amendment rights of the American people, Second Amendment rights that the President supports, uh, but which, as all of the measures do, uh, as a package would help reduce the scourge of gun violence in America, which is a, 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 an objective that he believes is nonpolitical and nonpartisan because the victims of gun violence in America uh, are not Democrats or Republicans. Uh, and as we have learned, uh, are, they're often not even eligible to vote. Okay. Yes. Uh, it appears that <clears throat> background checks are the center of gravity in this uh, legislative debate. And I wonder if the White House believes it's a false construct on its face, both politically and from a policy perspective, that background checks require a federal registry. It is not our position that. But is it a false construct? Do you not have well, to I, have? I don't know. That, that that may be too clever for me to answer. I think the 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 fact is is that the existing system there is a, this is something that I think is misunderstood by those who don't follow this issue closely. There is a background check system. What the president believes has to be done, and what uh, the efforts underway in Congress hopefully would do if passed and made law, would close the loopholes in that system, make the system comprehensive so that it is most you know, absolutely effective in, as effective as it can be, in preventing uh, weapons from getting into the hands of those who should not have them. That's the purpose of the system. And it is a, uh, this idea is supported, as I said earlier, by a, a huge majority of the American people uh, of all political persuasion. Uh, so you are aware that being injected into this debate is a either assertion or a fear that a registry has to be accompanied for this to be effective. And I'm well, I, what we do not believe that. We, well, wh whether you would describe that as a false construct or not, we do not believe that. That is not uh, what would happen. 
uh, and uh, a system that already exists merely needs to be improved uh, so that these loopholes are closed, so that those who should not have weapons cannot obtain them. Uh, that is the purpose of this legislation, and it does not involve registries. It is simply a background check system that would do in full what the system already does in part, which is, uh, in a very simple process, uh, ensure that those who don't uh, or should not have weapons cannot obtain them. And that would apply to private transactions as well? Yeah, I, you know, I, the, the position is, is that the loopholes ought to be closed, all of them. I'm not going to get involved in the specific negotiations underway right now. Uh, this is obviously a topic of uh, much discussion among those uh, in the Senate who are engaged in this process. But uh, we firmly believe that this element of the President's package uh, is very important and that it ought to be passed, uh, as should all elements. Uh, this one in particular has enormous support among the American people. It, it is on its face a common sense measure, and uh, we hope it moves forward. I want to follow up on Jim's question on immigration, uh, because you mentioned some of the metrics or ways that people thought about measuring things in 2007 when the bill fell apart. Are you saying that those are acceptable means of measuring and maybe by certain standards have already been met as far as border security? I'm simply citing what uh, some lawmakers, including Republicans, have said about uh, the you know, goals that were asserted by some back in that previous debate and how they have been met when it comes to some of these metrics. Uh, it is a fact that we now have nearly 22,000 personnel along our border. That's an all-time high. Uh, and they are uh, deploying unprecedented levels of technology in the effort to uh, make our border more secure. And, you know, there are just a variety of metrics that DHS, uh, I know, has discussed and provided to reporters uh, that confirm the progress that has been made on border security issues. We want to con standard the border is already secure. No, I think that what I would say in, in echoing some uh, lawmakers is that much of what has been what was put forward as necessary back in that debate has been achieved. I would not suggest, because the president would not support this proposition, that uh, we do not need to continue to do everything we can to make our border more secure. And the president is committed to that. That's why it's a key element of comprehensive immigration reform. Secretary Napolitano is committed to that. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are working every day to take necessary measures to improve our border security. And that's part of the discussion right now uh, on this important piece of legislation. Lastly, on the CR, whenever the President signs it, what is the takeaway from the White House on the fact that he will sign a CR that in large measure puts into law for the second time the sequestration and perhaps cast a shadow over future years? Because well, the sequestration is there and it's there are those who look at it now and say this is part of a new normal. Well, the CR does not put in, the CR just simply, ex, you know, extends budget levels in keep, keeping with the previous budget agreements. The sequester stays into effect. It doesn't alter the fact that the sequester is being implemented uh, in keeping with the law. There is no question that we believe we should not have come to this point where sequester would be imposed. Uh, there's no question that we believe uh, regular folks out there are being unnecessarily harmed by imposition of the sequester, which was designed by Democrats and Republicans purposefully never to become law, to be filled with nonsensical approaches to deficit reduction. Right, and yet here it is. And yet here it is. So we, 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 would, we would love to see Republicans change their mind about imposition of the sequester. We would uh, welcome a change of heart you know, maybe a uh, change back uh, to the position they held for uh, much of uh, 2012, which was sequester's imposition would be uh, cataclysmic and terrible for the economy and for our national defense. That is what they said at the time. Uh, instead of doing what they did on January 1st, end of the year January 1st, instead of doing it, which was to uh, postpone or delay the imp implementation of sequester with a balanced buy-down which they were willing to do two months ago and now are suddenly unwilling to do, or, or recently became suddenly un unwilling to do. We would welcome a reversal of that the position. Had to accommodate <clears throat> political realities he finds very negative, well, right? There is no question that Republicans chose to implement the sequester. We cannot, uh, 
we, we have presented ways, the President has presented ways on numerous occasions to eliminate the sequester entirely, to do that in a balanced way, to do that in a way that asks those who are well off and well connected uh, participate in further deficit reduction. Lost that. No, we have not lost that. The fact is this doesn't mean you've lost that debate. On the overall effort to reduce our deficit in a balanced way, no. Uh, absolutely not. The fact is the Senate passed a budget that is balanced in, in its approach to deficit reduction, that allows for the key investments that are necessary to allow to, to so that our economy will grow and our kids are educated. Uh, it uh, enacts further spending cuts uh, and entitlement reforms. You know, it mirrors the balanced approach that the Simpson-Bowles Commission uh, put forward, that the President's budget proposals and submissions to the sequester uh, and his offer to John Boehner represent. And that, you know, we hope that now that the House has passed a budget and the Senate has passed a budget, uh, that we can come together, Democrats and Republicans, and reach a compromise. Compromise requires accepting the general proposition you're not going to get 100 percent of what you want. The President has, in, in his own submissions and offers and his budgets, made clear that he understands that, that he is willing to compromise on uh, things that are difficult for Democrats. What we have not seen as of yet is a commensurate willingness by Republicans to compromise. So their position now is we ought to uh, devastate Medicare. We ought to uh, seriously reduce, dramatically reduce our spending on education, research and development, innovation, manufacturing, infrastructure. Just cut, cut, cut to the bone in the name of deficit reduction. But while we do that, reform our tax code in a way that funnels massive tax cuts to the well-off. That's, an, that's a terrible approach to the problems that we face because this challenge can be dealt with in a balanced and reasonable way. And that's represented in the President's proposals. Uh, it's represented in the budget the Senate passed. And the President hopes that, uh, and as these conversations continue that he's been engaged in, that we can move forward and find common ground. Uh, it's going to be hard because, as we've seen in the House, uh, there is an embrace of, by some, of the idea that the well-off and well-connected should not only be held harmless, but they should get a huge tax cut. I understand that, Jay. I know, but that's all. A bunch of resolutions are all theoretical until you do something in reconciliation. Mm -hmm. the CR is law. And for the second time now... CR is simply... You're, 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 <coughs> I'm just, I'm just, mm -hmm. you're putting into place that which the White House fundamentally opposes. Originally suggested but hoped I never would you, be implemented, but now has to implement... I just want to be clear. The CR extends funding level for the government through the fiscal year at the levels already agreed to by both parties. It did not eliminate the sequester. It doesn't address the sequester. The sequester, sequester remains law. Well, look, the Republicans made clear that they went from saying the sequester would be the worst possible thing that could ever happen to calling it a home run, to saying it was a political victory for the Tea Party. Well, no, he doesn't. He thinks they were wrong. So. The CR does not, you're not signing a sequester, Major. I think you've got to understand the CR is not the sequester. Republicans chose to impose the sequester. The sequester was part of the Budget Control Act, okay? So if you're asking me, does the President regret that Republicans would not make a common sense balanced, uh, accept a common sense balanced proposition to postpone or eliminate the sequester? You bet. Is he continuing to work with lawmakers of both parties uh, on a bigger deal that would? Uh, not just eliminate the sequester, but reduce our deficit beyond the $4 trillion target that we've all talked about? Yes, he is. And uh, he hopes the Republicans will go along with that because the American people overwhelmingly support it. Yes. Hey, on Syria, um, interesting moment today at the Arab League summit where, of course, President Assad was not there, so a Syrian opposition leader took his seat. Uh, I wonder if you could talk about how symbolically important you think that is in terms of getting Assad out of power, but also when that opposition leader had the microphone, he seemed to be calling on the U.S., some of our key allies, to do more. And how do you answer that criticism that you're facing? Well, I would say a couple of things. One is we support the Syrian opposition coalition, as you know, uh, and we do so with our partners. We believe that it is the legitimate represent, re representative of the opposition and of uh, the Syrian people in their effort to uh, rid their country of the scourge that is President Assad, uh, a leader with enormous amounts of the blood of his own people on his hands. Uh, we continue to provide an exceptional amount of humanitarian aid to the Syrian people, the largest amount, I believe, 
uh, of any country. We continue to provide non-lethal assistance to the opposition and continue to step up the levels of non-lethal assistance that we provide. Uh, and we work with our partners. And look, I, as the President said on his trip when he was asked about Syria, you know, this is a, a, a problem that we uh, are working with our partners on. It is a it is one when it comes to our policy that we, we are constantly evaluating in terms of uh, what steps we should be taking to help bring about uh, the transition in Syria that the Syrian people so desperately deserve. Uh, and you know, we will continue to do that. The, the fact is that, again, we have provided an enormous amount of humanitarian assistance. We are assisting the opposition. And we'll continue to do so, working with our partners. On that trip, he was obviously in Jordan. And since he's returned from Jordan, there have been reports and there's some conflicting information about whether or not the U.S. is training the Syrian opposition inside uh, the boundaries of Jordan. Uh, and the question is whether we're directly training the Syrian opposition or whether we're training the Jordanian forces to, to then train them. Can you clear that up? Well, let me say that we have always been clear that our non-lethal assistance to the Syrian opposition includes equipment and training to build the capacity of civilian activists and to link Syrian citizens with the Syrian opposition coalition and local coordinating councils. Uh, you know, so I can, I can say that much. So what does that mean in English, though, I guess? <laughs> That's pretty good English. Well, I mean, no offense. There are no dangling like participles. <laughs> no, I mean, so are, are we training the Syrians directly, or are we training them through Jordanian? Well, I can just tell you that, again, our non-lethal assistance to the Syrian opposition includes equipment and training to build the capacity of civilian activists. You know, on some of these other issues, I don't, I, I don't have anything for you. But uh, it is clear that we are th providing the kinds of non-lethal assistance to the Syrian opposition that we've discussed. Okay, one other quick question on health care. Uh, Republicans on the Hill are complaining that there's, there's a draft questionnaire, or a draft application, I should say, for people to apply for insurance coverage under the Affordable Care Act. And I think it's on page 59, there's a question asking whether you want to register to vote. Mm -hmm. And Republicans are complaining specifically about the idea that in offering a benefit, mm -hmm. there seems to be a suggestion that the administration wants to steer people to register to be to vote, but to also register for the Democratic Party because you're getting a benefit. Is, well, is that what the administration Are you suggesting is doing? that all benefits, are, does that mean the Republicans are disowning any, any ownership of Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security? Is that? It's about the Affordable Care Act. Well, actually, the, the, the linkage so of uh, you know, checking off whether or not you want to register to vote goes back to a 1993 law that re regarding Medicaid, uh, which may be Republicans opposed, I can't remember. But the, uh, you know, again, it goes back to that. It's not about the Affordable Care Act. I, I, as a separate measure, I'm not sure. Uh, that is such a terrible thing that people might want to register to vote, but um, I think this predates the Affordable Care Act. Yes, sir, Peter. Back to Syria very briefly. How do we know that the aid, humanitarian or military, in any form that's coming from the United States, is going to the right people? Is getting to the good guys in Syria? Right. Well, now? obviously we uh, monitor this closely. We, in making our decisions about the kinds of aid and the uh, uh, that we supply and and who we provide it to. Uh, evaluate just these questions, but we have, when it comes to the Syrian Opposition Coalition, we obviously have recognized uh, that organization and uh, work with our partners and directly with them to help them unify uh, and to provide non-lethal assistance to them. Uh, but I mean, this is a question I think as we're going back on this issue in Syria that we've talked about in the past, that uh, we have to make these evaluations all the time. And do we presently have people on the ground inside Syria helping vet those opposition members to determine groups to see exactly who should be recipients? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Um, let me digress very briefly. I want to ask you a question. Given the fact that the President is a big college sports fan and now we're heading toward the Sweet 16, uh, this is the first year where basketball teams have been disqualified for failing to meet academic requirements. This year, one of the teams that failed to make it was Connecticut because it didn't graduate, mm -hmm. approaching 50 percent of those necessary to graduate. So would the President be willing to endorse efforts to raise the minimum academic rate, basically the minimum graduation rate, higher to 60 percent or something like that? It's a fascinating question, and I don't know the answer to it. I haven't had that conversation with him. I know he believes uh, strongly in the, you know, the, the need for student-athletes uh, to be students, 
but I don't, uh, beyond that, I haven't had a conversation with him about that particular proposal. I guess the question then for, to take for consideration, I'll, I'll pose it to you again soon since we'll have plenty of time to talk basketball, is the gist is right now, if you have 50%, <laughs> that's viewed as sufficient uh -huh. to play in the NCAA tournament. Does this White House support efforts to try to make it higher than that? Again, I just, I wouldn't want to uh, guess whether we have a position on what it is. I, I can just tell you that the president mm -hmm. in general believes that, uh, you know, it's important for student athletes to be students and not just athletes. Roger. Uh, thanks. Um, back to immigration and guns for a moment. You said uh, a few minutes ago that I'm driving them away. <laughs> maybe it's you, Roger. I don't know. <laughs> you said a few minutes ago that you'll continue to hear the president in public on these two issues. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little sketch as to what's planned in the next several weeks on pressing no. immigration and guns? No. I can just say that I have no scheduling announcements to make, but the president has made clear trips to the hill again, one-on-ones. Again, I don't, I don't have any specific scheduling uh, engagements to preview for you. Going back to his State of the Union address and then back even further to the announcement of his plan to reduce gun violence, the President has made clear uh, that he considers this a priority and he will uh, make that clear as he has already uh, in the future, in the coming days and weeks. as these issues are uh, under, you know, being under, uh, as these issues are considered by the Senate and hopefully move forward in the Senate. So beyond that, I don't, I don't want to preview anything for you, but you can be sure the President will be continuing to discuss what he believes are uh, fundamentally common sense proposals that would help reduce gun violence in America in a way that is absolutely appropriate and that in no way infringes on our Second Amendment rights, in no way takes, would take uh, any weapons away from any law-abiding citizen. Uh, and you know, he believes that we ought to move forward with those measures, and we are working with the Senate as they consider them. The event in Port on Friday is on the economy, but could he conceivably touch on these two subjects as well? Well, I'm not going to preview that event uh, or the President's remarks, I would just say that in, in coming days and weeks, as these issues uh, move forward in the Senate, the President will want to uh, make clear his support for common sense measures to reduce gun violence. Yes, yeah, Alexis. I was going to ask about Florida also. Can you tell us whether any members of Congress will be with the President at the event? It's supposed to be at the Port of Miami. Uh, I just don't have anything for you on that. When we're ready to provide more details about the President's schedule, uh, we'll offer them to you, but I, I don't have anything more. Can you at least suggest that it's trade-related? Can you help us talk? I, I, I can promise you that when we have uh, more information to provide, that we will provide it. And it'll be excellent. Yes, Steve. Uh, just to follow up on Ed's question, can Tip specifically ask for the for NATO and the U.S. to provide Patriot missile protection uh, for um, rebel strongholds in Syria. Uh, that would seem to me the test of non-lethal help. Uh, is that something the U.S. might consider? Well, we are aware of the request, and at this time, NATO does not intend to intervene militarily in Syria. I think that a Patriot, Patriot missile battery, I think, would be uh, would fall within the definition of military assistance. Uh, the Patri Patriot missile batteries that uh, are deployed in Turkey are for defensive purposes only to augment Turkey's air defense capabilities to defend its territory and people. Uh, but again, we will continue to work with the coalition leadership and membership to expand their efforts to provide uh, essential services to Syrians across the country to deliver assistance to those in need and prepare for a Syrian-led political transition uh, toward a free and democratic Syria. Bill. Jay, the uh, Italian highest court in Italy has uh, reversed the verdict of Amanda Knox, who is now back in the United States. Is there any way the Obama administration would agree to the extradition of Amanda Knox so she could go back to, have to go back to Italy? Uh, you know, this is a legal matter that's, I think, still in process. So I just don't have any comment on it, Bill. Yeah, right. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. Um, back on the gun issue. Uh, there have been uh, 381 sheriffs, local sheriffs, that have uh, signed on 
saying that they would not enforce gun laws that they believe are unconstitutional. Uh, would the administration or the Justice Department have any uh, problems with that if, if sheriffs at the local level or local law enforcement did not enforce whatever gun package did? Pass? Well, I haven't seen the, the letters that you reference. I think that uh, as a general proposition, uh, we think that people ought to follow the law. Uh, and uh, as a absolute uh, matter of fact, in my view, and I think many others, including constitutional experts, there's not a single measure in this package of proposals the President uh, has put forward that uh, in any way violates the Constitution. In fact, they reflect the President's commitment uh, to our Second Amendment rights. One more. Uh, the, today, the Democrats for Life uh, filed amicus briefs in two cases regarding the HHS mandate. Um, would you have any comment on that? I, I don't. I don't have anything for you on that. All the way in the back. Yes, sir. What's the position of the president on, with regard to the visas for immediate family members, for uh, immigrants who will benefit with any immigration reform? You know, I, I, I know that this is uh, an issue that is uh, part of uh, the discussion as uh, comprehensive immigration reform is being worked on in the Senate. I don't have anything specific for you on it. I w we want to see what uh, emerges from that process. The president's views on this are reflected in his blueprint. Uh, which has been available for some time online. Uh, but I don't want to prejudge uh, a bill, a bipartisan bill that's being worked on before we've seen the language in that bill. Yes, sir. You said you didn't want to get into the business of predicting Supreme Court case outcomes. Would, should we expect <laughs> the President to talk about same-sex marriage at all between now and the Court's decision? Well, I don't, I mean, the President's views are clear. Uh, he made those views clear. Uh, last year, he spoke about, uh, in a press conference, I believe, about the uh, amicus brief that the Department of Justice filed. And he spoke uh, beyond that about his own views uh, and uh, how the application of heightened scrutiny, in his view, would mean that there would be no way to write a, a law that uh, cleared the bar when it came to justifying discrimination against LGBT Americans. So, uh, but I, I, it's, it's certainly possible that it, uh, either in an engagement with, the, you know, in a press conference or some other uh, encounter he might be asked about and therefore speak about it, but I don't have anything beyond that to preview for you. Anne? Can I follow on that? Does the President have any thought about why there's so much interest in this town, so many um, members of Congress and public figures are changing their minds on gay marriage today. I think it was Jay Rockefeller and Senator McCaskill has changed, Senator Warner of Virginia. Um, does he have any thoughts on what it is about an issue like this that is really a very dramatic increase in support in public opinion polls in the last year? Well, the President has noted in talking with you about the uh, transformation that's been taking place in American society on these issues. He's talked about his own evolution on these issues. And many other commentators on American society have uh, discussed, I think, in depth uh, this phenomenon, which is a welcome phenomenon. And I think the only comment that uh, we would have about it, we'd leave uh, the in-depth in -depth studies to sociologists and others, is that it is a recognition by an increasing number of Americans that gay and lesbian Americans ought not to be discriminated against. And that goes to core principles about who we are as a country. The President spoke about this in his inaugural address, uh, and that section of the address was much noted, and it, it reflects his, his core beliefs on these issues. Okay. Donovan. Thanks, Jay. I just wanted to get back a little bit to the sequester and implementation here at the White House. Um, has there, is there further information about that? Like, if, are people getting furlough notices and... I'll have to check. I, you know, we were traveling. I'm not sure uh, what updates I have on that. Uh, you know, we, it, we, as we've said in the past, we've, the sequester applies to uh, the White House and the Executive Office of the President uh, as it does to the rest of the Executive Branch. Uh, but I don't have any more details for you this for weeks. Is there a way to maybe corral some of the information and put it out as opposed to just getting the question again and again and again because we're going to keep asking again? And yeah, again? I, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can get for you. It's, you know, this, this is when furlough, you know, decisions are made, as I understand it, and I would have to refer you to OMB, but about the implementation of an application of the sequester, you know, that then 
there might be furlough notices or reductions in pay, and I just I'm not familiar with the details. And I don't think before those things actually happen, and we've seen this in other, other agencies, you know, that before the notices actually go out, uh, you know, we don't have specific information about when that will happen because I think those evaluations are being made uh, in real time. Is that it? Thanks all.